Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for introducing me. I'm Jean-Philippe. Um, I'm French and Flemish-speaking, so unfortunately not Finnish. Um, but let's start, because I have only 20 minutes, and I would like to get through all my slides. I've got quite a lot of slides and quite a lot of insights. So um, I uh, sold my company to a company called Biznote, and uh, I'm also an ornithologist, so I like birds. And all my companies in the past had bird names. So I had a company called Swan, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. But I, still, I sold it to Biznote, and uh, I think with Biznote, we can take a next step. And the next step is not only delivering data, but it's taking steps beyond that. And that's what we're going to talk about. So, AI is not an easy thing to talk about. So, uh, as an econometrist, you can talk a lot about algorithms and modeling, but basically what is AI all about is about creativity. How to use and to connect dots, and how to use technology in order to have business gains. That's what it's all about. So, if you're a data scientist working in your basement and trying to invent something during two years and then come out later in the light and say, ta-da, this is the next new big thing, it doesn't work like that anymore. Or, of course, you always have the exception that confirms the rule, but it doesn't work like that anymore. We call it co-creation. Today, we're entering a new world that is called co-creation. And in the co-creation, you need creativity. But also, if you want to read something, we need to keep it simple. It's already complicated enough. So Ken Seagal wrote a book, Insanely Simple. It's far more difficult to make things simple than to make things difficult. But the trick is to know when it's getting difficult. So he's the inventor of the iPod, iPad, and all the campaigns behind, and a campaign which I like a lot, which is not real English, Think Different. Read that book, it's really a really nice book. Okay, so I told you about birds. Uh, the econometrists and economical people will know this. Uh, what about the black swan? What about the paradigm of the black swan? Ten years ago, we had the stock crash. We had the Lehman Brothers going down, and at that moment, it was sheer panic. Nobody knew what was going on. Very simple, because we didn't access the data, or all the data at that moment. Hours later, days later, weeks later, they were starting to access the data, and they tried to understand it. And it was toxic Wallex, Supremes, etc. This is called the paradigm of the black swan. And I translate that to history and to ornithology. Until James Cook discovered Australia, everybody thought that swans were white. But in Australia, you have black swans. So that means that if you don't have access to all the data and make a 360 degree, your prediction, your modeling will not be complete. I'm not saying it will be wrong, but it just won't be complete. And today we can add a layer of AI. So and I started a company called Swan, which means also social web analysis. So you need to take the unstructured data into an equation. So company data, Publicized data is not enough anymore. You need news data, you need social web data, you need all IoT data, you need everything. Okay, so that's why I'm saying you need to think different, because this creates new business models for your company. And this is really what we need to get to, the creativity and the think in a different way. I go for Biznode across all 20 markets in Europe, I speak to large customers, and the biggest hurdle is here the intellectual transformation. It's not a digital transformation, it's an intellectual transformation. You need to be open for a new business model. You need to be open for more creativity. And I'll give you some examples. So all those robots are algorithms, and you, the customer, are the door. You can buy algorithms online, no problem. You can find a lead generation algorithm at EBM for the banking sector, 250,000 euro. Be my guest, buy it. Will it work? Probably. But it needs to be trained. It needs to be adapted. You need to give feedback. I'm not a banking specialist. 
You are. So you need to tell me what's good and what's bad. That is what you need to open up the door. And if you don't do that, you'll be disrupted. So to give you an example, in the banking sector, you have Libra. You heard probably about Libra. Read the white paper. Only 10 pages, very interesting. They chewed on it for, like I think, more than two years. So Libra, I'm not a personal believer in cryptocurrency, but anyway, that's not the discussion. You see over here, you'll see, I don't know if I can do it with a laser here, yes. Look at all the partners of Libra launched by Facebook. Do you see a bank in there? There's not a single bank in there. Zero banks. Because it's about the ecosystem. So if Vodafone works together with Uber and MasterCard, they're owning the ecosystem. And it's all about the ecosystem. And you need the data about your ecosystem. You need the 360 degree of your ecosystem. Then you will be owning and you will be able to predict what is going on with your customer and prospects. And by the way, we had last week PSD2 launched by, in Europe, so open banking, open data on this. Well, the bank is not owning anymore solely the payment process. Add this to this. So if, for instance, I don't know, Facebook or Spotify can own the payment, they have the ecosystem, you have another story. And that is being disrupted. If banks are not looking out the next years, they will have a serious issue. And that will happen. It's only happening now. Look at the success of Revolut, N26, etc. Okay, so it's all about the data. That's the core of everything. So what do we do at Biznode is we try to co-evolution. So we try to get away our customer. I'm not a banking specialist, I'm a data specialist. And we share the pain. And we did build an AI platform so we can put everything in there. And the data, and the feedback, and the modeling, and the algorithms. So how do we do that? Just an example, just in the Benelux, we're following more than 50 million sources on a daily basis. Your company website is just one source. LinkedIn is just one source. So we're putting that 360 degree together. News is also a source. And why are we doing that? It's because that 360 degree has so much value. And that 360 degree changes all the time. So that's what we do. We use our technology for that. And then we'll try to create, as I call it, a magic moment. We're trying to create value. I don't walk in my basement and try to go, uh, create very nice algorithms. I don't do that. Yes, I do that, but that's not my goal. Okay, so when we're doing the 360 degree, there's one important thing that we can add to it. It's the dimension time. If we talk about lead generation, we can say, now that customer is interested. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, no. If you buy a list today, it's a static list. This is becoming dynamic. So that's the big difference. And how do we do that? Very simple. Every individual, every company is permanently giving signals. And we try to catch those signals within the 360 degree. And then we try to do something with it. Lead prediction, churn prediction, some bankruptcy indicators, sustainability indicators, etc., etc. We have a long process to do that but we have also a short process. But the long process is, I'll quickly explain it, is we have a workshop together. Why do we have a workshop? Because I'm not a banker. I need to know what is important for you. And there we define the KPIs, the timeline, etc. And then we go into a proof of concept. And you see over here the iteration. So I need your feedback. If I don't get your feedback, the results will be probably okay, but not very good. And as long as we got more feedbacks in, the quality gets better and better. And then only we go into installation afterwards when we reached the uh, KPIs. And you see this is a kind of a perpetuum mobile. As long as you give feedback, the quality goes up. Of course, 100% in biology and in statistics does not exist, so we'll never reach 100%. But you continue giving feedback, and your leads, your data, your value will be of excellent quality. How do we do that? Well, very simple. Like I said, we build the 360 degree, we add the triggers, and I'll give you some examples in a minute about that. We do the, 
the model management, we get all the data, you have to read it like that. So we're building that 360 degree and everything is on that platform. And like I said, it goes up into the quality stack, the stack of value. So that means that even in the recurrent phase at the end, you continually will have a quality increase. And you see it's one touch point. It's all in the platform. It's all in the overview. And you'll see at the end, we'll build in the platform apps, just like we have a sudden bankruptcy indicator. Because every day, today everybody has scorecards, but it's all based on static data, not on dynamic data. So we have a customer called Lego, which had a big issue in 2018. Toys R Us in the US went bankrupt. They lost more than 200 million euros because it was just before Christmas. They have the best scorecards in the world. Yet they didn't see that coming. So that's the reason why companies are buying a certain bankruptcy indicator, because they didn't make the 360 degree. There were other indicators that they didn't see. It's the same for predicting when a company is going to hire and which roles he's going to hire. And then you change the momentum. The recruiter can call the company and say, hello, I know you're going to hire next quarter. Probably salespeople. Here are my best 10 salespeople on my database. So you're inversing the role. Same as CLP that I will explain in a minute and for instance, sustainability index as well. So we predict also which companies are going to travel more next month because those companies are giving signals. So what about all this? What about if you could, you know, like, shh, create creativity, have increasing quality, have permanent value creation, that you can work together with a customer. We have customers today that share their revenue that we are generating. This is new. And that's where business is coming from, from just selling a static list to have share revenue models where they are. Okay, and we have already some names working with us here. So I just explained to you about Lego, but we have also the United Nations, American Express, etc. But I'll show you some examples. Okay, so let's take one first example, the corporate loan prediction. So we are going to predict which companies are, will be needing cash the next quarter, the next month, etc. So it's just about cash prediction. Those companies are giving, like I said, signals. And we have two types of products in there that we're, that we're using. is the short term, when they need a straight loan, and the long term, when they need more investment loan. So we, I'll show you a case that is in Slovenia. Slovenia is just why I'm using this case, because everybody says, yeah, JP, you're working for large companies with large footprints, etc. No, here's an, here's an example of a... Sparkas is a big name, is a conglomerate, but in uh, Slovenia they're quite small. We have the problem of the Slovenian market and we work for SMEs. And SMEs in Slovenia are really small companies. So basically what is happening over here is because of the iteration, when you call, we produce a lead list of companies next month. So we box the market in Slovenia, all the SMEs according to a definition. And every month we produce a rank list. Number one on the list is most likely to be needing cash next month. And then they start calling. In the test phase, we did 1,000 leads by every iteration. And at the end, 12 corporate bankers were calling. We didn't know that. Because you're changing their way. Corporate bankers don't like to call. But now, hey, you're opening up a new subsidiary. Are you in need of cash? Or you're launching a new product? Or you're appointing a new CFO? Or you want a big RFP? Or you did this, etc. So it's always the not one, trigger that will make the difference. It's the combination, the cocktail of triggers. So, I don't know if that will work. It's an interview of the corporate banker. From Sparkasse in Ljubljana, uh, the lovely country of Slovenia, where Tomasz with Sparkasse had some kind of a challenge in the B2B market. Hi, Tomas. What was your challenge? Hello. Our challenge was um, to persuade our advisors to call the customers. Uh, um, we had some issues with, with uh, investment loans. Uh, we, we want to increase the number of customers to volume of, 
our placements into the investment loans, but our advisors um, didn't want to call the customer, didn't want to um, execute this cold calling. And we wanted to find a way how to address uh, the customers uh, on the right time, uh, how to address the right person um, to be more successful uh, with this calling and to increase our uh, investment loans. How did BizNode help you in this equation to get the value that you wanted? Yes, um, BizNode found us or we found BizNode uh, because we are experts in, uh, in uh, banking. Uh, in, we know exactly our market, the, the needs of customers. But with data, we don't know how to handle exactly. And BizNode was the right partner for us uh, to offer us the, 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 some techniques with artificial intelligence to find out the right moments, the right person, uh, to which company we should we should uh, attack, if I say uh, so, uh, um, and uh, Bisnot provide us uh, provides us with with uh, leads. We used it for I would say hot calling, and our advisors were really satisfied with this uh, solution because the successful rate was uh, excellent, and we like to to continue with this cooperation also in advance. Okay, so what happened here is that the corporate bankers didn't want to call. I don't want to lift up that phone. I don't want to do cold calling. And like he said, we changed that into hot calling. So what happened is over here is all of a sudden you change the job of those persons. If this was a call center, you change the job because they know when to call, why to call, how to call, and on top of that, they can give feedback straight into the algorithm. So that means you're giving a more better meaning to their, they have the sense to have impact in their job. You've got the biggest turnover in call centers, well, that could, could help them, but also for the corporate banker. And you see a number of triggers over here. So for instance, uh, if a website all of a sudden goes from only Slovenian to English, French, and German, you know that a company will probably export more and increase. So maybe this is a good moment to, to call. If the sea level is changing at the same moment, or he's in a Gazella uh, ranking, or he's having a trade show in Shanghai, having 200 square meters and launching a new product, we can detect that. But it's never one trigger, it's always the cocktail. And I don't know the cocktail. The corporate bankers know the cocktail. So that's why I need his feedback. So are you gonna tell me what happened to that? Well, very simple. We had a KPI over here of hitting the right company. We had a KPI at 40% set together. We hit 84%. The right moment, yeah, this is the right moment to call. Well, we hit 86%. And then we said, during this proof of concept, we needed 20 deals. Then we said, it's going to be successful. We hit 90 deals. And now we're on a recurrent contract for five years with a shared revenue model. And basically, in the recurrent, still giving the feedback, you know, like the quality is still increasing. And this is how AI can help. It's that iteration process. But don't develop algorithms in your basement and then say they will work on the market. It doesn't work like that. Okay, so we all know her. She likes to sail across the Atlantic. Um, but there's a problem. The problem is, when I go to a shop, I don't want a plastic bag anymore. So my behavior, my buying behavior is changing. Buying behaviors of companies are changing as well. Why? Because of sustainability. So we work together with the United Nations on sustainability. So we did in 180 countries, at the first phase, 500 products, but we're going up to 5,000 products. So basically what we're doing is building a sustainability index and map. So we're assessing 180 companies. We can do that as business because we also have access to, we're a, a premium partner of uh, Dun & Bradstreet. So we have access to 180 countries and, uh, and uh, 200 million, 220 million companies. 
So we're going to rank them from most sustainable to less sustainable according to 200 or 500 products. And more than 127 criteria defined by the UN. Again, we're building a 360 degrees out of those companies. And we're following those companies. So we're only not only delivering the company information, but if a company is producing bananas, I just say something, and it's doing it in a sustainable way, it will be higher in the ranking. And you, as an importer in Helsinki of bananas, you could choose, oh, I choose that company instead of this company because it's higher in the sustainability index. Decided by the United Nations. So that means that um, the United Nations is also checking that. So if a company is producing bananas and throwing their wastewater in the river, and there's a press article about it, we'll see it. But on top of it, we'll check that. So, and then people say, yeah, well, how do you check that? Well, we go on the company websites, and even the local producers sometimes have, or most of the time, have company websites. So, and we automate that again on the platform, and we have minimum threshold KPIs to do that. So basically, we're increasing that capacity. You can still go on the ITC and the WTO website, and you can still... It's you, 11 hours. You can also find that. Okay, so to finish up is, uh, if you're working with data, don't think in columns and rows. Think in value. I'm also a strong believer in reinforced learning. So lots of algorithms are existing. Just take the good pieces out and let the customer, let the market decide what is important. Don't decide that as a data scientist. Don't play God. It's the market. I call it also digital Darwinism. It's together that we make that co-evolution. And you got immediate results because, you know, like what we do, we spit out results in the first time. The first delivery won't be good, but then it will be better and better. So thank you. That was my uh, explanation.